I am Dr. John Basso, and I am an allergist immunologist in the Penn Medicine ENT department. I'm here today to give some basic advice to patients about how to manage their allergies and asthma during this time. So the risks are clear for our moderate to severe asthmatics. They are at higher risk for complications due to COVID-19. And so we want to make sure that they're well stabilized, well controlled, and that they're not having any issues. Uh, and also uh, patients who have immune deficiencies, as well as patients who might be on medications that suppress their immune systems. So I think they need to think about allergy symptoms as being overall definitely less severe than COVID-19. Uh, usually sneezing, a nasal congestion, runny nose, itchy eyes, watery eyes, maybe a mild cough or a wheeze, uh, itchy ears, itchy throat, itchy nose. Whereas with COVID-19, patients almost always have fever, shaking chills, a dry, irritative cough in the lungs, uh, shortness of breath and inability to get enough air, uh, and then they have severe headaches or severe muscle pain. Uh, they really, really don't feel well. They're fatigued, they're exhausted. They really are much more um, debilitated than they would be from their allergy symptoms. A unique symptom we're seeing is a rapid loss of sense of smell or taste which, um, and there is no nasal congestion in patients who have COVID-19, which is different from patients who have allergies. So that's definitely a distinguishing feature. It doesn't seem to cause congestion as much as it seems to cause loss of smell. Uh, and even, we're even seeing some unusual rashes with this condition that people have rashes that they've never recognized before. Perhaps it could be a manifestation of COVID-19. So I think that the most important thing they should remember is that they should not be altering their regimen of medication. And if there's any doubts about what medications they should or shouldn't be on, they should be contacting their provider. But this is not a time to start cutting back or to start self-medicating. Uh, self this is a time to really have a regimen that you can stick with and perhaps an action plan to have if things get worse what should I do next? Who should I call? Or what medicines can I increase? Et cetera. I mean, asthmatics should continue their inhaled corticosteroids. They're not going to have any detrimental effects on the lungs. They're long-acting bronchodilators. They're short-acting bronchodilators. Uh, if they are on a T2 biologic, an anti-inflammatory biologic injectable, uh, the asthmatic biologicals do not seem to have a suppressive effect on the immune system, so they should continue those. Anything that would destabilize their asthma. The only place where they may need some clarification and they need to talk to their doctor about, uh, if, they're, if they're not sure, it would be oral corticosteroids because of the effect on the immune system. Some patients need to be on them and, and can't just stop them cold turkey, so that's something you'd have to base on an individual case-by-case -case situation. Uh, and that's something where they should speak to their physician, but certainly uh, do not make changes without speaking to your physician, and you don't want to destabilize the asthma. So for allergy injections, uh, we are talking to patients individually, case by case, as to the severity of their allergies, and if the level of allergy severity is manageable, we're trying to postpone their injections and just have them make up the time when the uh, interval is such that we can bring them back into the clinic. There are some patients who are more severe who when they don't get their injections for a period of time will exacerbate. And so for those patients, what we're doing is we're just lengthening the interval a bit, but we're still having them be aware of what the risks are for coming into the clinic. We are hoping to uh, reopen our clinic in a very safe and responsible way over the next few weeks. And uh, we're looking to preserve the safety and care of, of our patients as well as our healthcare workers in the process. And that's all, uh, that's all going to be happening uh, later this month. If you're allergic to pollen, particularly, or outdoor mold, you should really just have a good uh, HVAC AC filter uh, and so air conditioning will filter out those particles. You should probably, it's time for spring cleaning, you probably should be changing your filters. Uh, that would be good. If it's primarily indoor allergens, it means more vacuuming, more cleaning, more damp mopping, perhaps uh, 
reevaluating the bedding, uh, cleaning the bedding, have, you know, having uh, special covers for your mattress and pillows. Uh, if you have pet allergies to reduce exposure, perhaps uh, washing the pet, getting what's called HEPA, H-E-P-A filters, which can help purify the air and reduce indoor allergens. All of those things are things that can be done to reduce indoor allergens. And as I said, something as simple as a good air conditioner filter and running the air conditioning in the springtime if you're highly allergic to spring pollens would be helpful. So if patient are ha patients are having allergy or asthma symptoms, then um, they certainly need to refer to either their action plan or they need to get in touch with their provider. Our staff is available to answer questions. We are also available to do telehealth visits to tide people over in this time. Perhaps we need to make a medication adjustment uh, or we need to order a new medication. We are available, our department is available, our providers are here, our nurses, our physicians, our medical assistants, everyone's available to try to uh, help in whatever way possible. And again, uh, the availability of televisits uh, we've done numerous of those to try to bridge the gap during times when patients are unsure and, and, and these are uncertain times and perhaps some people are not, not only not certain where they may not know whether or not they need to seek emergency help or not. These are things that we can sort out for them, right? So if you have a real emergency or having severe shortness of breath, can't catch your breath, um, having a whole whole body allergic reaction or you still need to go to your nearest emergency room. It, there are safe pathways for patients who are not COVID-19 patients to get care. And uh, it's still in your best interest uh, to, to make sure that you get the emergency treated. Staying home and trying to weather the storm when this would be a situation that could be potentially life-threatening is not, is not a good choice to make. And our emergency rooms are safe for patients who do not have COVID-19 symptoms. Uh, and, and, and they, there is a screening process and it's working very well. And we encourage patients who need these emergency facilities to utilize them appropriately. And uh, we've heard a lot of cases of people having severe symptoms and staying home because of that fear. And we, we want to discourage that tremendously. It's important that that doesn't happen. Okay. So right now we are screening patient calls. We are uh, we are answering patient questions. We're refilling patient medications. We are offering televisits for patients who need a more in-depth uh, analysis of, in terms of screening their symptoms, giving them a, a, a plan to get through this period of time, perhaps adjusting their medications, et cetera. We are, uh, we are beginning a resurgence plan that is going to be both safe and responsible that will protect uh, both the patients and the healthcare workers uh, as, as responsibly as we can. And we're hoping to do that in a, in a very stepwise manner. So it's not going to be an all at once type thing. And we hope that with small increments, that within, uh, within several weeks, we will be back to close to where we were before the pandemic. We certainly plan to do it carefully and monitoring every step as it occurs to make sure that, uh, that we're being successful uh, at keeping everyone safe while we do it.